some of the things we did in the first half felt were very good. Um, obviously, I thought the second half we um, weren't maybe as efficient, but um, but all in all, um, you know, pretty solid. Um, obviously, we get a get a big step up uh, with Syracuse. This week, an ACC Big Ten Challenge, which uh, uh, unfortunately all good things must come to an end, and, and this will be the last year of of that challenge. And uh, you know, I think it's one of the elite events that obviously ESPN has uh, uh, has been a part of for a number of years, and, and it's it's uh, uh, been one of the elite events for them uh, in the first semester. So. Uh, you know, I'm excited to uh, to put our guys out there against uh, one of the all-time greats, Jim Mayheim and his Syracuse team. Uh, they're uh, uh, they're always going to be an NCAA tournament caliber team, so we're we're preparing like that and and uh, expecting to have to play very very well to win the game. So uh, <clears throat> again, it's. Uh, Exciting to have um, have that game here at home and, and, and in front of our fans. And, um, <clears throat> hopefully, we'll uh, we'll go out and play well. Jack and I both have mics. <clears throat> I mean, with you know ESPN announcing that Big Ten ACC was over. I mean, did that surprise you this morning, or did you maybe sense that was coming after the change in? Uh, Media rights? No, I, I think it's just expected. Um, you know, I think there's there's no um, like I said, every every good thing must come to an end. And, you know, obviously the the uh, the new media rights deal was a big part of that. Um, I would assume, and uh, you know, we'll have to go find a game elsewhere then. Coach, in handling their T three zone, major storyline, obviously, but. Is that, is that something that you uh, worked on prior, or you, did you just start taking a look at it le leading up to this game? No, we worked on it since um, you know the early practices. I mean, we we you know that's one of the things you never know in league play is how much zone you're going to see um, and when you're going to see it, and, and you get coaching changes, and and uh, we have seen some, we haven't seen a ton. Uh, obviously, it's what uh, Jim does, and, and, and Syracuse has been known for. And uh, you know we'll uh, uh, have to execute against it, have to make some shots, and and uh, you know, move the ball and do all the things that uh, you have to do against the zone to uh, uh, to, to to beat it. In that uh, Linden Wood game on Friday, uh, you see a little bit of the sloppiness with uh, 22 turnovers. Is that something that you uh, kind of emphasize to the guys about taking care of the ball going into a tougher matchup tomorrow? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think we're 30. Fifth in OER in, in, in the country in Kim Palm. Um, we'd be half that if we didn't turn the ball over. Uh, we've got to we've got to clean that up. And, it, and so many of them are just unforced. So many of them are just um, there's good turnovers and there's bad turnovers, and, and two thirds of ours are bad turnovers. Uh, they're not they're not forced. And uh, you know it's still the idea of playing fast, playing with pace, and yet. Uh, you got to find a balance, uh, a balance in that. But uh, uh, yeah, there's no doubt. You know, games moving ahead and, and starting tomorrow night, we, we can't do that. I guess just with Matt over the last couple weeks, it seems like his four games kind of improved sort of passing and rebounding. Have you kind of seen a difference from him after kind of getting comfortable with everybody at this point in the season? Well, yeah, and I, you know, I think it's it's uh, it's not easy to be in a system four years and shift gears all of a sudden. And just say, hey, you know, this is going to be easy, and and it, it, it's not. And um, you know, his role is, uh, you know, our team is still growing, it's still forming, it's still, um, you know, we, we need his scoring, we need his his, uh, you know, we, we saw in the in the games in Vegas, his rebounding, uh, his playmaking, uh, we need all of that stuff. And, so he's starting to get he's starting to get really comfortable. His practices are very consistent. He's been playing well in practice. Uh, it was nice to see the ball go in for him because I know he's been pressing. He's been working hard 
on that. We all know what a good shooter he is, and, and uh, you know the ball just wasn't going in for him. So it was great to see that, and when uh, in a game when we've been seeing that in practice. <clears throat> with a, I guess, a hole in the schedule moving forward without you know, this game, would you like to see uh, another kind of challenge? I don't know, I don't know maybe Big 12s out there. Or do you think Gavin games will continue, or do you, would you like to just have the freedom to schedule whoever you want? I mean, you, the one thing with the, uh, I think we have one more year left on the Gavit. Um, I think the thing that is, is those things get out of our control. You know, TV sets a lot of those. You know, this was ESPN's event. Um, you know, if somebody wants to put those together, um, you know, I, I'm not saying we wouldn't be for them or against them. Uh, you know, I think they're, they're, they're great games. Uh, I think they're great opportunities to play quality opponents in front of your home fans every other year. Um, and I think it's, um, you know, it was good for everybody involved. It was good for the ACC. I think it was great for ESPN. I think it was very good for the Big Ten. And so, uh, what happens, I don't know. Uh, you know, we're going to set about to uh, fill that void uh, with another high major game uh, and start another series. And, and uh, uh, you know, it's just one, one quality opponent that we've got to go fill our schedule now. It's before you came here, was Big Ten ACC Challenge something you, I don't know, kept tabs on? Sure. Sure, everybody knew what those games were, and those were always great games. And uh, you know, you always follow that on on uh, uh, you know, it was a week long performance for for both conferences, and and uh, you know, five nights of great quality basketball, and uh, that's one of the things that um, uh, no matter what league you're in, you you always knew when those games were on, and you always paid attention because they were going to be really. Top line matchups. Coach, what have you seen on film from their big man, Jess uh, Edwards? I think uh, seems like he's impactful on, around the rim on both on both ends. Yeah, he doesn't shoot anything that's not not at the rim. Uh, he's a he's a very very good offensive rebounder. He reminds me a little bit of the big kid from uh, Virginia. Uh, and then he goes to the offensive glass. That he's he's got length. He can dunk balls. Uh, he's he's mobile. Uh, you know, likes to get to that left shoulder and shoot jump hooks. Uh, can catch lobs, and uh, uh, you know he's he's plus he's an effective shot blocker. So uh, you know he's like anybody who's going to play in the middle of that zone. He's going to affect shots with his with his uh, shot blocking ability. And um, but a uh, good player. He's, he's you know he's he's been around. He's he's, he's been in that program. I doubt you'll see anybody this year slower than Virginia, but Syracuse is in the 300s and Ken Palm in tempo. Is there something you have to tell your guys or remind your guys about playing in that type of style or even trying to speed that up? Well, I think we learned something from the you know, Virginia game in terms of, of, of what that looks like. And, you know, I thought uh, at times we got the pace where we wanted to go. And, and uh, you know, we're not, gonna, we're not going to uh, not do what we do. And we're going to try to continue to to um, you know, play with a little bit of pace, and uh, that doesn't mean shoot it quick. That means take great shots, but uh, you know, take our opportunities if we get stops, and and make sure we push that ball. And, and that's what we've done in every single game, and, 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 and we're going to try to do the same thing again here. Coach, for Syracuse, Joe Girard, he's been around Syracuse for a little while. He's a three-point threat. He's able to lead the offense. What do you see out of him and your guys' approach to slowing him down? Yeah, Joe's a good, good, really good player. Uh, they run a lot of actions to him. They run a lot of uh, uh, put him on pin downs, put him on baseline screens. He's got the ultimate green light. Uh, you know, he's a guy that again knows how to uh, uh, knows how to score, knows how to get a shot. He knows how to find a shot. Uh, he's got a great knack for getting fouled. Uh, you know, he, he plays and uses his 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 body. Uh, so you've got to be really solid on him. You got to you got to make his uh, his touch is more difficult. You got to uh, understand that uh, he's he's a priority in what they try to do, and, and he's a guy that uh, you know I think as Richmond found out he had 30 plus, and he's a he's a handful when uh, when he gets going. Yeah, you see guys uh, on the team like Edwards and Gerard. You kind of expect them to be fac factors in the offensive game, especially. But then you see guys like Justin Taylor just had 25 points uh, last game against Bryant. Uh, how much more dynamic does that make their? team in terms of sources of scoring. Yeah, I mean, he's a kid that, uh, you know, we call him net strippers. You know, he's a guy that can really, really shoot it. And, 
And, uh, you know, Brian was the NCAA tournament team. That's a good basketball team that, uh, uh, that they just played. You know, he comes off the bench, and, and uh, I'm sure he has earned more minutes. And uh, you've got to be very conscious of, of, of taking up his space uh, and, and not letting him get clean looks. And, again, uh, you know, he's, he's a guy that uh, I remember watching, you know, on the circuit. He gets a clean look. He's going to make it. And, uh, uh, those guys you've always got to uh, gravitate to and know where they're at all the time. What response have you seen out of Sky after Friday's performance, and what do you want to see carry over this week in a, a big stretch for you guys? Yeah, he's making great decisions. He's not. Um, uh, he, he's being aggressive without being selfish or overly assertive. You know, he's he's kind of found the right mix, uh, looking for his opportunities when they're there. Uh, you know, not being afraid to to, uh, uh, to drive it in, not being afraid to to pull up and shoot it, not being afraid, not not being afraid to they go under shoot a three. Um, you know, I think we've got three guys on our team averaging three threes a game, and three attempts a game, and and uh, you know he's he's when that happens, it's 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 opened up our interior, it's opened up our ability to drive the ball, and uh, he's found that nice mix. <clears throat> Actually, I have a big picture. I want to give you a chance to plug your lead. What, what do you make of the early success of the Big Ten teams in this pre-conference schedule? Yeah, I don't think it's any surprise to any of the coaches. I think that the um, it was very easy to get um, automatically just say, well, the league's going to be down because we had so many draft picks last year, and we had you know we had nine teams in the tournament. We had. Uh, all these guys go in the top 15 of the draft or top 20 of the draft. And, and um, um, you know, the departures make it look, oh, wow, the league's going to be down. But, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's proven otherwise. You know, I thought it was always pretty foolish that anybody who has, didn't have Purdue in uh, obviously doesn't know the impact of Zach Eady at 7'4 and, and, and what that does to a, to a basketball game. Uh, they proved that this week, and you know there was the obvious Indiana's, uh, but uh, you know uh, Maryland's playing as good and maybe is as good as anybody in this in this conference. Uh, you go right on down the list, Penn State, uh, what they're doing offensively, um, and everybody's good. I don't know. I watch Nebraska. Um, you know that's a that's a much better basketball team, and uh, so I don't know anybody in this league that's bad. Nebraska or Northwestern, I think seventh in the country and. DER, uh, you know, should have beat Auburn. So it's a, um, it's a great league as always. I don't expect it to ever be anything but that. Great coaches, great players, and great facilities, and, and, um, and, and, and great fan bases. And, and uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm not shocked. Excuse me, back to maybe a uh, Typical schedule now that you know, the break's over. How do you be able to your guys to maybe take what they did well last week and you could go two a days and maybe put that into you know the more regular schedule? Yeah, I mean we've got to you know we've got to be more efficient in our practices in terms of of um, uh, not having two a days, but understanding what the purpose of practice is every day. That's one of the challenges we've had to, with this group. You know, we just separated offense and defense for a couple of days. And, and now we've got to combine them and we've got to understand, okay, scouting report, we've got to understand, uh, you know, we're emphasizing turnovers, we're emphasizing rebounding, understand what the main, every, every practice has a main agenda to it, even when we're prepping for somebody. Um, but, uh, you know, it's every day. we just got to continue to get better. We've got to keep it simple. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, now that we've got kind of a Tuesday, Friday, Tuesday, Saturday, two game a week type, uh, situation we've got to we've got to be able to handle that and know that practice is about still about getting better and uh, uh, league play is quickly upon us and we've got a great great challenge tomorrow at the ACC challenge so uh, you know they're 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 for real from here on out. In Syracuse last game things got a little chippy, a few ejections. Have you talked to your team at all about how Syracuse may be coming in with extra motivation? I would think they're going to be motivated. Jim's teams always play hard. Um, you know, I think every game's got its own identity, and, and we haven't talked to our group about it, and, and, and probably will not. 
Uh, you know, we just got to go out and play, keep our composure, do what we do, and and uh, you know, handle ourselves in the appropriate manner. One more back here. And then Coach Bayheim, he's been around for so long. Who knows when he's going to retire? What has he meant to the game of basketball, college basketball? Just as a, th a thousandth win for the second time in his career. Um, just what has he meant to college basketball? Well, I admire I, I admire longevity. And, and longevity at one institution, to me, is really special. Uh, I think it's so hard to do. It's so easy for uh, administrations, fan bases, uh, what, whoever. Uh, but to, to find a level of success and be able to, uh, to do that over the course of time, uh, to uh, have the success, I mean, you don't, you don't win a thousand plus games because you're a bad coach. Uh, you know what you're doing, you know, you know how to motivate, you know how to teach. Um, so, you know, I think everybody that's um, uh, watched his career, understands what a good teacher he is, what a good motivator he is, and, and that's been evident by his ability to, to, to win basketball games.